What's going on guys? Coming at you with a new gank hunting build today. I learned a lot making the last one, and decided to put together a Pyromancer this time. Compared to a Strength Faith build that abuses Wrath of the Gods, I think this one is a little weaker overall, but it has a lot more options in nearly every situation, and it's a lot of fun to play. I'm going to first talk about the build itself, both the stats I have and the spells I chose, then I'm going to show a couple of good techniques you can be using on the build, and lastly commentate over several anti-ganks. In my opinion, the core of this build absolutely requires 45 decks and some amount of poise. I'll link my exact version of it in the description, but besides these two things, you can pretty much change up anything else you want. 45 dex increases cast speed, which is essential. Since I'm leveling that up no matter what, I use the silver and gold tracers in my right hand, switching between them based on what I need at any given time. Having a strong backstab weapon is always important in the forest, and this build has amazing backstab follow-ups that I'll be showing soon. In my left hand, I have the max pyro flame and an empty slot so I can switch back and forth if I need to parry. These three weapons, along with the Crown of Dusk, are the only essential things in terms of equipment, making the core of the build really lightweight. As a result, stacking poise is pretty easy. I managed to get 76 poise, which is the two-hand R1's Y-hander breakpoint, with 40 endurance and no load increasing gear. You don't need to stack it that high if you don't want to, but it's really easy to do, and I highly recommend it. You can use the Bellowing Dragon Crest ring to increase your Pyromancer damage, but I found that it didn't really make a difference between getting a kill and not, whereas the Hornet ring did. My final ring choices were the Hornet Ring and the Wolf Ring, but you can pretty much use anything. The number of attunement slots you take is entirely optional, and if you're trying this build out for the first time, you should start on the lower end and see what you feel like is missing as you go along. My final choice was 27 attunement, with which I equipped Black Flame, Great Chaos Fireball, Chaos Storm, and Regular Firestorm. It also turns out that there's a direct upgrade to Firestorm called Fire Tempest, which I had no idea existed, so if you're planning on using my spells, use this one instead. Initially I ran two copies of Black Flame, but over time I saw I wasn't relying on it as much as I expected to, and I didn't really use up more than 8 casts. Regardless, it's essential for its high poise damage, high cast speed, and strong ability to catch rolls and wake-ups, so I definitely recommend at least one copy. Great Chaos Fireball is incredibly strong and versatile, I think it's a requirement for the build. You can also use the regular Great Fireball if you prefer. I found the Lava Pools from the Chaos version were worth the extra slot, but you may think differently. Chaos Storm combined 76 poise create an insanely powerful combination, easily allowing you to get the cast off right in people's faces. At first I thought also bringing regular Firestorm would be overkill, but it wound up being really useful, and I highly recommend bringing both. And again, bring Fire Tempest instead of Firestorm. I did experiment with a couple other Pyromancies. Uh, initially I wanted to include Chaos Fire Whip because it does really high damage, but it does really low poise damage, and the cast time is way too long. Very punishable. Fire Surge was also an idea, but it is just garbage. It, it should only be used as a joke. That's pretty much all for the build, so now I'm going to get into some of the techniques I picked up while using it. Great Chaos Fireball is generally the go-to choice at mid-range, where you generally spend most of your time feeling someone else out. It's pretty much impossible to hit someone while locked on, and even if you free aim it, they can just roll on reaction. To counter this, the best choice is generally to free aim it straight down. If they roll towards you to dodge, it'll always hit. It does very high poise damage, so be ready to follow up on a stagger. Additionally, if you expect them to try and roll behind you, or possibly just circle around, you can turn whichever direction you're predicting and cast it on the ground there. Black Flame is a great choice for catching both rolls and backstab wakeups. Against mid rolls, it's basically guaranteed, as you just saw in that clip. Against fast rolls with the right timing, you can still catch it semi consistently. Here, you can see you walk up very closely behind someone and time my Black Flame with the roll, picking up a kill. A cheekier way to follow up a backstab is with one of your firestorms. After getting a backstab, immediately cast it while walking towards them. The beginning of the animation is long enough to get up right next to them, so don't delay your cast. From my experience, it's somewhat luck based depending on where the gouts appear. As you might expect, it's more consistent against mid roll than light roll. If they're stuck on a tight area, it's more or less guaranteed. Here's an example of me getting pretty lucky, only hitting him with the furthest out geyser. And here's one in a tight area, where I can't possibly miss. In one invasion, someone tried the same strategy against me, and I learned that it's also just avoidable if you stay calm. Here you can clearly see a safe path for me to roll through, and I aim there and escape safely. If you're familiar with Wrath of the Gods, you might know that it can go up and down, as well as through some walls. 
However, firestorms don't have quite as much vertical range and are blocked by some terrain. Be aware of this when you're trying to hit people on the stairs. My closing thoughts on firestorms are that they're actually really strong and really easy to use. People are afraid to use them just because of how long the cast time is, but when you have high poise and if you position your back correctly, you can get it off safely a lot more often than you think, and it does a lot of damage. These are just some basic combos, and there's a lot more depth to the spellcasting in this game than I'm able to show or do. Keep these tips in mind, but don't be afraid to experiment and find even better techniques. With all that out of the way, we can get to the ganks. To start out, I'll show the first gank I beat with this build. The combination of Poise and Chaos Storm give you a good out when people try to attack your spawn, but this build still fares a lot better when you don't have to deal with that. Even if you have incredible spell free aim, which I don't, they don't go very far. You should generally treat your Great Fireball as a melee option. I want to pause here quickly just to address the fact that when you get this stagger with the Fireball to the feet, you have so many options to choose from next. You can try and catch their auto roll with Black Flame, you can throw another Fireball where they're going to roll two, you can try and stab them and then go for a backstab follow up, there's so many choices and none of them are necessarily correct. So try and think about the situation and what's going on around you before you pick one. What I wind up doing is giving my light stagger, then when he panic rolls towards me, I circle around for the bank stab. You're gonna find that a lot of your kills come from a combination of one hit with a pyromancy and one backstab, not necessarily in that order. When you fight someone using a great club or a demon great machete or something like that, you know they're looking for backstabs, so you have to be extra careful. Rather than trying to finish off the host here and risking getting backstabbed, I decided to just back off. I know the host is going to be coming back, so I don't try and stick on this guy for too long. However, as soon as I see the phantom trying to fight the tree, I can cast Chaos Firestorm with no penalty. It connects, and when the host tries to mid-roll away, I catch him with a black flame. Don't be afraid to cast your Firestorms raw. I saw that the host was using a katana, and he could not break through my poise without the help of the phantom, so I could just use it right in his face. A lot of the time, your first move is going to depend on how close they are to attacking you with spawn. In this case, they're way too far away to punish me properly, and I'm able to open up with a Chaos Storm and hit them both. I keep my eye on the Phantom because he has a chance to punish me. I get a little too greedy and try and pick up the kill with the second Firestorm, which completely misses, and I'm stuck back at square one. However, on this build, sometimes staying on the stairs can be to your benefit, even if they're trying something like Tranquil Walk of Peace. They try and run straight up the stairs, and I bottleneck them with multiple Great Chaos Fireballs, picking up two kills and ending the fight. They thought it was safe to rush me after I expended both my Firestorms. However, this build has so many spells that you always have something in reserve. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a white phantom in the lower left and the host coming for me, so I try and open up with a Chaos Firestorm. Here I should have been able to finish off the phantom, but I make a mistake walking off while casting and I don't get to finish him. As you can see, when you cast Chaos Storm or any Firestorm variant, if you get interrupted halfway, it doesn't use up all your charges, and you can keep on using it. At this point, they're wising up to my antics, but the lava pools left by the Chaos version of Firestorm deal a little bit of damage to this guy, and I can finish him off with a backstab. With just the backstab, it probably wouldn't have been a kill. I'm trying to fight the Phantom, but the host is dealing a lot of damage with the Avalon. They both switch to range battle, and I'm able to just run into a corner and heal for free. I pretty commonly choose to run away, and while a lot of people might not like that kind of playstyle, you have to do everything you can to survive. I fish pretty hard for a backstab, because I want to get this done with before the host can resummon. However, it's not working, and I keep getting pelted with these arrows. My Estus isn't unlimited, so I run off and try and think of a better plan. Usually in these situations, the phantoms and host will chase you to the end of the earth. However, this time I notice that the phantom keeps shooting arrows, but the host runs back to resummon. I rush after the phantom as fast as I can, so I can try and win the 1v1 before the host gets back. This was a little bit of a risky move, as this phantom was wielding a parrying dagger. You would expect him to at least try it, but I managed to just chop him down with a gold tracer. When you need to get a quick kill, it's not really worth playing games with pyromancies. I go for and fail multiple backstabs, and decide it's better to rely on my flames. I could have guessed just from the armor he's wearing, but this confirms that the host is mid-rolling, which gives me more options in the future. Always keep in mind the things you learn about your opponents, their playstyles, what moves they usually like to use, what kind of role they have, and you can pick better options in the future. Because I knew he was mid-rolling, I pick up a kill with a firestorm. 
Closing thoughts on that invasion? Don't be afraid to run away. There's nothing wrong with retreating and regrouping when you're against three people. And vary your playstyle based on how they play. Like I mentioned before, you can use the stairs to your advantage a lot with pyromancies, so I'm in no rush to leave them to begin with. If they aren't pressuring me, sometimes I'll just wait around, see what they do, see if there's anything I can abuse. When you have the time to, make sure you buff up, eat your green blossom, and look around. See if there's anyone hiding, maybe using chameleon. See what kind of weapons they're using, what kind of armor they're using. There's nothing wrong with waiting and gathering information. This is all stuff you can use later. Eventually, this phantom gets tired of playing games. He mess up the backstab attempt, but he falls into this little pit, which is very strong for pyromancies. The first lava pool appears in such a way that he thinks he has a path to get to me, and then I throw one ball straight at my feet and chop him down with the gold tracer. As it turned out, there actually was another phantom hiding with Chameleon. I decide to sacrifice this blue with Chaos Firestorm so I can hit the gold. These clips look a lot better when I'm the only one getting kills. I plan to abuse my high poise here one way or another, either chopping him down or getting the backstab. He tries to turn around with a dash attack and I get that kill. When people are focused on dodging pyromancies and 1v1s, they kind of lose their effectiveness. You should, however, still try and abuse all the tricks you have. I first show him that I'm not afraid to swing my weapon, and then decide to mix up with a black flame. I accidentally pressed the wrong button, but I still managed to catch the roll at an incredible distance. This other red seems to do the best he can to get in my way. So far, every time we approach the host, he's been trying to run back behind us, so I angle my black flame to the side and catch him trying to run. Be patient, use your surroundings to your advantage, and abuse your pyromancies for easy wins. It took me a little while to find the players in this world. One phantom peels off early to deal with me. I pretend not to see him and try and catch him with a surprise fireball to the feet. He opens up with a combustion, and I know I can poise through that, so I'm not afraid to try and trade with a fireball. You have poise for a reason. Make sure you're using it. He abandons his pyromancy flame for a shield, and I'm wary of getting parried. I manage to catch him in a roll in a pretty weird way and pick up the first kill. When I see the other two coming while I'm only at half health, the first thing I do is run away. There's no way I can take that fight. At this point, I'm still not sure if I want to try and turn it or if I just want to heal. When I see them coming around this corner, I decide to go for a Chaos Storm. Neither of them get hit, but the lava pools give me enough time to go further away. They must be safe to keep chasing now, right? Similar to Wrath of the Gods, Firestorms benefit from the enemies having high poise, allowing me to hit them two times with one cast. And that's going to do it for this video. I'm really happy with how this build turned out, and it was a lot of fun to play. If all that matters to you is winning the most, I definitely recommend using a build with Wrath of the Gods in it somehow, but if you just want to try something fun and new, then this build is perfect. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, hoping to make more like it in the future, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.